Hello everyone, this is Nathan Rourke with another lesson. Today we're going to be talking about an old weapon. And in the Chinese arts, this, this weapon is known as a thunderbolt. Uh, a mid last century, so the middle of the 1900s, this weapon came out and it got popularized in Japan and came to be known as the Kubaton. Whatever you call it, it is a very effective weapon, a very easy weapon to carry. It's um, relatively non-conspicuous depending on what type of design you go with, but extremely effective in countering all kinds of attacks and assaults. This design right here is one of your more common designs that you'll see in martial arts st uh, stores or online. It's an aluminum design, uh, grooved nicely for your fingers to hold on to, has a nice tip to use. Uh, this design is actually a, an aircraft grade aluminum writing utensil. It's a pen, so that's its camouflage. It's, it's a pen, but uh, don't be fooled because it's, it's quite an amazing weapon. It's got a glass breaker end here ready to use, and on this end, it's got a little LED flashlight. So it's kind of multifaceted tool here that can be camouflaged as a pen in your shirt pocket or, or in your pants pocket. And the last one is a homemade one out of a hard local wood here called Yellow Locust. Um, so this is a, a neat craft project you can do at home with your pocket knife. Um, but this is a, a Kubaton made out of locust. Um, and this one is, I think, the, the least conspicuous of all of them because it looks kind of like an arts and crafts project. You can hang it from your keychain or carry it in your pocket. People probably won't really assume that it's a self-defense weapon. So how is the Thunderbolt used? And by the way, y'all, I'll use Thunderbolt and Kubaton interchange uh, in this lesson here today. But how is the Thunderbolt used? And um, what we have in the Thunderbolt is we have three main uh, ways it's a weapon. Okay, first and foremost, we have a, in fact, I'm gonna set these down so I can use my, my hand. I'll stick with the wooden one for our training today. We have a pinpoint attacking, um, striking a weapon here that, that is, is the pointy end of the Kubaton or the Thunderbolt. And it's designed for hitting nerve points, for hitting bone structures, um, for hitting the body anywhere really because you're delivering an amazing amount of force to a pinpoint precision spot which of course channels all the force into a very deep and penetrating strike. So that's its first and foremost weapon of the Kubaton. Secondly, what you have is um, is the ability to tighten up a fist. People that don't train punching things with fists tend to break their fists when they get into a fight or need to defend themselves because their fists are not uh, trained to, to tighten up and take all the airspace out of a curled up fist and therefore uh, fingers and bones really take a punishment. But if you curl up something to take up all that space in your fist like a coupon or the proverbial roll of coins, right, that roll of pennies you put in your fist and it, it helps your fist become harder, a more vi viable weapon, less likely to hurt your fist in a, a moment of attack. And then the third weapon or the third tool that a coupon gives us is a hooking device, right? So in, in the Chinese arts and Kung Fu, we have the Manus style, which uses lots of hooks with our fingers. Well, this coupon can also hook and manipulate and maneuver around an attack or move your opponent in certain directions. And so we're going to show you some examples of all these today. We're going to start with some very basic techniques of the Kubaton. And for that, I've asked my friend Andre to join us. Come on in, Andre. So first of all, how do you employ this? Well, if it's in my pocket, it's too late. If it's in my pocket, it's going to be hard for me to get it out of my pocket and deal with the attack with any kind of efficacy. So I want you to think about if you um, are in a, in a spot where you're feeling a little nervous, where your, your hair has raised on the back of your neck, and, and you need to trust that instinct, by the way, trust that, that, that nervousness that you're feeling. You want to go ahead and get your coupon ready, and there's ways to carry this that's, um, that's non-threatening. Right? So I like to maybe tuck it up under my, my wrist like this, and I can walk through the parking lot, and no one really knows it's there. Or if I'm standing in a crowd, I don't mind kind of tucking it under my arm. I'm just kind of hanging out, no one knows it's there. So it's out of my pocket, it's in my hand, it's ready to use. Again, because it's gonna to have to be used with lightning fast, um, you know, countering, because 
if you don't use it fast, if I have to reach in my pocket to get it, I've already been hit 10 times by the time I've got my Kubaton into play. So um, a, a good example of how the Kubaton is very effective, if Andre comes up and grabs my shoulder, and he's saying, hey, what's going on? He's getting ready to fight me. I wanna think about, hey, I wanna take care of this grab, first of all, and then I immediately wanna deal with this left hand that's coming in to punch me. So Kubaton comes out, and notice how I'm holding it. I'm gonna hold it just like I'm st a stabbing knife, a downwards grip knife stab. And I'm gonna attack the small bones in Andre's hands, full of nice tender spots. I don't even have to be pinpoint accurate of exactly where I hit, all right? All these uh, small bones are coming in, and so I'm gonna hit it right on the back of Andre's hands. Anywhere in there, it's gonna collapse that grip, it's gonna make him wanna let go. Immediately, I want you to think about kind of a ricochet. It's gonna be one, here comes the punch, two. All right, I'm gonna attack that punch. Somewhere on that arm, I'm gonna hit that, that arm, that attack, with the pinpoint position of my Kubaton. All right, so let's go back and look at that real fast. If it grabs in, I'm gonna go hit here, here comes the punch, hit here. But look what my right hand does. It hits the arm. My left hand also comes up to deal with Andre's right arm. I've boxed Andre's attack out, and I'm gonna have a third ricochet. I ricochet off the arm and into the jawline somewhere. All right, I can hit Andre anywhere in this jawline, anywhere in the teeth, behind the jaw, in the neck. Any of that spot would be fine. It's gonna cause a lot of pain. It's gonna make Andre turn his focus elsewhere. His head's gonna turn away from me. I can turn and run, or I can keep on attacking. All right, I can throw in knees at this point. I can kick, but most of all, I have taken care of that initial attack with a one, two, three ricochet attack. And that's what I want you to think about. So it's gonna come in, grab, hit, hit, hit. Okay, one, two, three, real easy. All right, be careful when you're training with this, y'all, because any tiny little bit of light hit with the Kubaton is effective and it hurts. It's gonna hurt your partner. It's gonna put him on the ground pretty fast. You start delivering this to the jaw and to the teeth, to the nerves behind the jaw, you're gonna lose your training partners pretty fast. So you wanna practice it on a tree, on a piece of wood, on a punching bag really hard, but on your friends, you wanna exhibit some control because any small hits with these Kubatons, they drive deep, they destroy um, bones, small bones. They really get into the muscle tendon nerves and, um, and it's quite painful to work with, all right? So that's strike number one. Now let's think about this idea if Andre comes in and he's gonna throw a punch at me. All right, so a right punch comes in, I'm gonna step inside and I'm gonna attack, all right? I'm counterattacking, hitting anywhere in this top part of the forearm. That's gonna destroy that arm. It's gonna cause a lot of pain, but again, the attacks don't come, just right punch. So I'm gonna go one, ricochet two. All right, now again, I wanna think about the, cl um, the, the clavicular notch, right? So right above the collarbone. So one, two, and then I'm coming straight down, right into that notch. If I hit the collarbone, that's fine. It's all gonna hurt. But coming straight down into that notch of the collarbone, and I'm gonna put Andre on the ground. His knees are gonna go down. All right, so again, with this little tool, I can, I can concentrate my efforts. I can cause lots and lots of damage um, really fast. So again, that counterattack, if the punch comes in, one, left punch, two, and then straight down. Notice how my arms have boxed Andre's arms out. Again, I've created an opening, coming straight down on the clavicle, on the collarbone, boom, drive him straight down, and then I can come in with knees. I can get out of there, all right? Let's talk about how this can be used as a hooking device, all right? So now um, Andre's gonna come in with a shoulder grab this time. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the shoulder grab. Boom, hit here, coming shooting straight in to hit a lung point, all right? Lung point right under the clavicle on the chest, all right? It's gonna empty Andre out. And then I'm gonna come in behind the neck. I'm gonna hook the neck and I'm gonna pull Andre down. Hit again. All right, so real close up on that hook of the neck. It doesn't take much, but what I'm doing is I'm coming in behind the neck with this hook, okay? And I'm coming in behind the neck, and that lever, that small lever with that pinpoint pressure on the back of Andre's neck close to the spine is gonna drop him down. And in Kung Fu, we would do a mobility throw where he goes down, press that back, kick, run. But even just pressure and taking him down is a great takedown with a Kubaton. So again, technique comes in with the grab. One, 
straight in. Two to the long point, three to the neck. Hook the neck and around, he's going down. A little bit of kicking action and a mouth. Okay, the Kubaton can be used in all kinds of ways. This is just a great introduction to this little tool. I suggest everyone get out there and either make one, pick one up, practice with it, because we're gonna be getting into a lot more techniques with this little thing. This Thunderbolt is so easy to carry, it's lightweight. Wooden ones like this aren't really noticed as a weapon, or if you get the, the pin type, not really noticed as a weapon. But, you know, it's a great addition to an empty hand counterattack situation. It adds a lot more tools, a lot more, uh, a lot more viciousness to your counterattack, which then can easily kind of take the momentum away from an assailant. So y'all, thanks for joining us for another lesson here. Stay tuned, there'll be a lot more great things coming your way. Take care.